Hey guys, it's Hannah from Sherwood Forest Creations. Welcome to the shed. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to stitch on clothing and hats and tote bags using my stick and stitch patches. These patches are a water soluble adhesive stabilizer. You peel them right off from the backing and then you can stick them to whatever you want to stitch on. Materials with minimal stretch are going to work best for you. Here are a few tips. Make sure you wash and iron whatever you're about to stitch on first. Then go ahead and put the item on if it's something you're going to be wearing so that you can get the perfect placement for the patch. I suggest using a plastic hoop just to avoid any abrasions that a wooden hoop might cause to the fabric. Contrary to typical embroidery basics, when you're stitching on clothing item especially, you don't want the fabric to be as tight as it can get because that will distort the fabric. You want it to just be taut enough that there's no puckering around the edge. Think about how you're going to access the back of what you're going to stitch on. For a t-shirt like this, and with my placement, I can access it through the neck opening. For an item that's going to be worn or the back will be visible, you want to keep the back of your work as clean as the front of your work. That generally means going knotless. One way to go knotless still actually starts with a knot. It's called an away knot. You're going to put your knot in the front of the fabric away from where you're going to do your stitching. Give yourself at least four inches. I'm going to hide my knot in the seam of this shirt just because some fabrics are more forgiving than others with needle pokes. Now I can come up through the back and start my stitching. When I'm done, I'm going to do a typical tie off method by just weaving underneath my existing stitches in the back, working up my piece so that I don't add bulk into any one specific area, but I'm going to weave underneath more than I would normally. I'm going to weave underneath seven to 10 times to make sure that that thread is not going anywhere. Now I'll come back to my away knot. I'm going to clip it right underneath the knot to free that strand. Now I can go ahead and re-thread my needle with this loose strand. Now I'll tie off this end of the thread the same way that I did with the other end. Another option is to use the loop method. This only works if you want an even number of strands. So if I want two strands, I'm gonna take an extra long piece of one strand and fold it in half. I'm gonna thread my needle with those two ends together. Now I have those two ends together on one end and a loop on the other end where it was folded. Now I'll come up from the back of my fabric where I want to start, but I'm not going to pull all the way through. You can see here I've left my loop in the back. Now I'll make my first stitch, and from the back, I'm going to pull my needle through the loop. This is going to anchor my thread in place. Now I can continue stitching, and when I'm done with this piece of thread, I'll go ahead and tie off in the back by weaving underneath my existing stitches, just like we did with the away knot. Make sure you're not pulling too hard with your stitches. You're not trying to cinch the thread. You just want the thread to lay flush with the fabric. Pulling too hard can cause puckering. The patches can be a little bit more difficult to poke through, so I will use my thumb to stabilize right up where I'm trying to enter and exit the fabric. If you don't finish your project in one sitting, make sure to take your hoop off in between sessions. Leaving your fabric cinched in the hoop can cause an abrasion where the fabric is pinched between the inner and the outer hoop. We call this hoop burn. Once you're all done, you can go ahead and wash off your patch. Make sure you use the right temperature for the specific item that you're washing. The warmer the water, the easier the patch will dissolve, but it will still work in cold water if your item calls for it. You can use your fingers to kind of scrape away the patch as it starts to dissolve. Lay the item flat to dry and you're all set. You can get my stick and stitch designs in full kits with step-by-step -step video tutorials perfect for beginners. Or if you have some stitching experience, you can grab a variety pack and stitch it any way you'd like. And if you want to keep learning, you can join the Foundations of Embroidery online workshop. This pre-recorded course comes with over two hours of embroidery tutorials broken up into easy to follow sections. Follow the links in the description of this video or head to SherwoodForestCreations.com. Thanks guys!